I'm curious, uh, DK, who's your, who's your other uh, sleeper quarterback? So this is a really deep, deep sleeper. I, you know, obviously, this is more of a super flex thing than anything. But Will Levis, yeah, the, va the vascular king, um, Billy Jeans. I just think that what they've done around him offensively is is intriguing at the very least. Calvin Ridley, they just signed Tyler Boyd. Um, they added a pass catching back in Pollard. You know, Tajay Spears is a pretty good pass catching back. They drafted in the first round J.C. Latham to upgrade their offensive line. They have a new offensive coordinator. Brian Callahan, who was never afraid to go pass heavy when he was with the Bengals. Add in the fact that the Titans have the sixth hardest schedule, according to Sharp Football, um, which implies more passing in theory. You know, they're not going to, I don't feel like this is a team that's going to be able to just like run the ball and do nothing with their quarterback and just try and protect Will Levis. Like they're probably going to have to play from behind a lot. Um, add in, and he didn't really do this as a rookie, but he's also a very good athlete. He could run around a lot. He was actually like a Taysom Hill type QB early in his college career before he started doing more pro style stuff. Um, he's also got <laughs> what like that the mean, Josh. Like, what's that? There's a lot of things that could mean to a lot of different people. Taysom, Taysom Hill, Hill he was, he was running a lot. They used okay. him as like a like on quarterback draw plays, like Cam Newton, like where, you know, like he just draw backs and immediately starts running. Um, and then add in like the fact that he has that Josh Allen trait of just not giving a flying fuck about his body. He just will do he he just does not. He'd go he he blacks out when he starts running and he'll take on anybody. Um kind like Forrest could, Gump. Yeah, just point 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 down the, the down the field and go run force run and he'll do it. Um I don't know. A lot of things have to come together, obviously, for him to be a factor. But there's a lot of variables here that make me think he's kind of interesting. He's just got like that don't give a fuck vibe that I like. Um, and he could run around a little bit more than we think. And, and obviously, he could be a little bit better passer than we think. Levis just had like a lot of moments where you kind of like watched him make this insane play. And you're like, wow, like there is something here a little bit. The O-line was so bad last year in Tennessee that, I don't know, like half the plays he like couldn't, he didn't have two seconds to make a decision. Yeah. And he, he loves throwing deep. I, I think it was that first game he came in through like four touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. Um, he just chucks it to DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe he could be uh, this year's Bortles, whatever that, that, that <laughs> legendary Bortles. Bortles season where it's like, everyone knows he's not the guy, but he's sneaky putting up numbers in this team. That's also overperforming. Yeah. Garbage time. That. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Bortles to him for sure. Um, so anyways, it, it, especially in super flex, he's just type of guy. I'm like late. Take a flyer on him. Why not? He's a great, like, third quarterback to have on your team. Yeah. What about a post-type sleeper, DK? So, I'm going with Joe Burrow. Um, it feels a little bit, like you mentioned it earlier, he's our ninth quarterback this year. It, it feels like we've forgotten what the real Joe Burrow is like because of his really just truncated and injury-marred season last year. So, obviously, he had the, the, the wrist injury that cost him most of the season, but... Before that, it's it's easy to forget that he had a strained calf. Like I think it was the second practice or the first practice of OTAs. He strained his calf. He's that's never severe... healthy in August. He's that first yeah. practice he gets hurt every year. Yeah. And so that severely limited what they were doing. Basically, it was just like Craig said, park and park. Like they would just snap the ball and he would try and get rid of the ball as quickly as possible without moving. Um, and that completely, according to then OC Brian Callahan, it completely derailed what they wanted to do. And go back to and, and by the way, Burrow averaged 14 points per game. It, he was essentially unstartable, even though he was a really high pick. Um, and then go back to 2022, 4,500 passing yards, which was fifth most, 35 passing touchdowns, second only to Mahomes. He also rushed for 250 yards and five touchdowns, ended up as the QB4. And this is just one year ago, 2022. So he averaged almost 22 points per game. And I feel like people are kind of forgetting that. They still have an elite receiving core. They added a guy this year. T. Higgins is still going to be playing here, um, and he'll be more healthy in theory. I don't know, man. I, and they also got rid of uh, Joe Mixon, so in theory, maybe this means he'll be a little bit more pass-heavy. I'm just excited about what Burrow can do with when he's healthy and when he has his re receiving core kind of all around him. There's one thing. I, have you guys seen some of the reports lately about the wrist injury that Burrow had last year and like yeah. how, it's, how it's kind of felt recovering? And he basically was like, these last few months have been terrible and even now he's like i can't find another quarterback who's had this injury the only people who've had it are like linemen mm. and so like we obviously do very different things and we don't they don't need the wrist mobility i do mm. and uh i don't know i think there's like 
I think there's a little bit of fear with me with his wrist injury of like re-injury. I don't know. Burrow seems a little bit brittle to me. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> well, that was the worry with him brutal. coming out is because he's like kind of tall and skinny. But I, uh, I, I don't know. The, dude, uh, the, the wrist is, is a really like ligament issues in your wrist as a young quarterback is like one of this, probably the Not scariest even, things the way, you could The have. way you just said that, of just like, yeah, I can't find any of the quarterbacks who've had this. Like, that is such a, I'm out. Like, and for that reason, I'm out. Like, it's just, like, this is a shark tank. Like, I'm I'm not even fucking listening. No, you guys, anymore. he'll be fine. You know those, like, look, I saw some, like, fake pseudo doctor on Twitter being like, who knows, maybe they were a real doctor, but you never know. But those things are so persuasive. Like, anytime you see a guy <laughs> pretending to be a doctor tweeting, you're kind of all the way in. But he was like, oh, yeah, with this specific injury, da-da-da. I think there's a 25% chance of re-injury. And the second I read that, I was like, I'm out. Dude, 25% is low. That's fine. People get hurt in football. Yeah, but that's in addition to all the other normal injuries that could happen. This is, you know, him just, he could just throw a football and hurt his wrist without getting hit. Well, this is why he's getting pushed down in theory. Yeah. And so I'm scooping him up. I'm in. I'm not. I just about like it. I can't. I. I. The, the fact that you could just get Dak Prescott slightly before or Jared Goff or Tua way after. I would just. Oh my god! I would so much rather have Burrow than Goff or Tua. Are you kidding me? But it's not not like at the same slot. I'm saying you can get them again for basically nothing. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, th- I this I feel very strongly about. Like I would so much rather have Burrow than any of those guys below him. No, he has, like he Greg. has elite upside. None of those guys do. I, I know I, I like I'm like right in the middle. I don't really know. I, I love Burrow and I, he does have that upside. He's proven it. He was like a top. What is it? Three or four quarterback two years ago mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl year. But yeah, there's just something about the injury. I don't know. That gives me pause. My post type sleeper is Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> post type. You won the Super Bowl. <laughs> post type fantasy sleeper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was not even a top 10, top 10 quarterback last year. He was a QB 12 behind Justin Fields and Kirk Cousins. Patrick a bad Mahomes. year won the Super Bowl. Um, no, I don't know. I, I, I'm more saying like if, if he even drops like one to two spots in your draft, like I'm going to be going hard on Mahomes this year. If there's just like a little bit of Chiefs fatigue or Mahomes fatigue or somebody who spent 65 bucks on him last year and he stunk. Um, I think they're going to throw more this year. They've added Marquise Brown, Xavier Worthy, Rasheed Rice is probably going to get suspended. We don't know. Uh, plus Kadarius Tony. This is last. This could be Travis Kelsey's last year, um, and they're definitely going for this three peat. I think this is going to be like a theme of the whole year. Is like this team uh, is going to say like, all right, like Travis. Kel- I kind of feel like if they win the Super Bowl, Travis Kelsey's out. Yeah, and he's like, this is going to be my final year. So they're kind of going all in this year, and they're clearly adding so much more speed and explosiveness to this team. Um, and I just kind of want to be back in on Mahomes. I mean, two years ago, he threw for 5,200 yards and 41 touchdowns. And last year was kind of a mess. And the team wasn't very good. And the offensive line was really beat up. And they're kind of like putting that all back together. So he might like be like the guy I just want to take number one overall. I like in this. the super flex draft, you're saying. <laughs> yeah, super flex draft or just in a single QB league, he would be my number one over Josh Allen. I like that you threw Canarius Tony's name in there. Look, Reed, Reed said it. <laughs> what did he say? Reed he's, was like, he's could he's, still be the most talented receiver we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, he could be because they don't know because he's never there. <laughs> he, he's not sure. Uh, Best ability is availability. <laughs> yeah, Mahomes is good. I yeah. do like this, though. I, I know I that this is obviously kind of tongue in cheek. Like, he's obviously not a fucking post type sleeper, but I, I'm just kind of like, I want to make sure. That I that I know that I'm in on Mahomes as like my number one guy. So, uh, the, and also on that note, the NFL schedule they've like announced like a couple games. So the season opener slaps. It's Ravens at Chiefs, and then week two is Bengals Chiefs, which is sweet. And so mm. I mean, Burrow Mahomes, I I they're really going for it. 